since it's been a bit since I've done a junk silver purchase and hunt video, I figured we'd do one today. Hey everyone, it's Rob Finds Treasure. Welcome back to my channel. Periodically, I do like to do junk silver or constitutional, which is 90% silver, purchase and hunt videos. And I figured today would be a good day to do one because it's been a little bit. Now for today's video, I have $24.25 in George Washington quarters. And then of course, I love the older constitutional stuff. So in this bag should be mostly barber stuff and older. So quarters, dimes, half dollars, and maybe a few other goodies, like maybe a seated Liberty, if we're so lucky. That being said, we're going to do the quarters first, as far as the GWs, and then we'll do the older stuff second. The older stuff actually was $30.35, so we had more older stuff this time than the more modern silver, if you will. What I'm going to do first is dump out the quarters, and then we'll segregate them by decade, and I'll check for any varieties, better condition ones, and see if we have any better dates like semi-key dates or key dates if we're so lucky as well. Let me go ahead and slide this out of the way. We'll get this bag ready to dump and we'll see what we have inside. Not a bad mixture of George Washington quarters. For those wondering, I thoroughly do not expect to find any key dates like a 32 DRS but maybe some better dates, and more importantly, maybe some varieties. I think in one of my last junk silver hunts, we did find a 1934 DDO, so it'd be cool to score something like that again. Anyway, let me go ahead and get them sorted by decade, and then we'll go ahead and begin the hunt. As a quick reminder, when you see the values on these bags, this is the face value of what was in the bag. Now, you don't pay face value when you buy constitutional silver or junk silver. You pay a multiple of face. For this lot right here, we paid 21 times face. And for this lot, we paid 23 times face. So a little bit higher face value on the older stuff as far as a multiple of face value. And then of course, a little bit better deal on these Washington quarters. All right, let me go ahead and get them sorted by decade. If I run across something really nice in between then, I might bring you back. Otherwise I'll bring you back after the sort. So for the George Washington quarters, these are the 60s, 50s, 40s and 30s. I didn't see anything fancy schmancy by the dates, but I haven't taken a look at any mint marks or really any condition other than what I saw quickly. The stacks in front are the ones that are slightly better condition, obviously not so much coal or well circulated, and especially this really nice 1958 Philadelphia. Figured I'd pull that one aside. Now that we've got them sorted by decade, I'm going to be taking a look for any DDOs, DDRs, any type B reverses, maybe a type C reverse, and things of that nature. Let me go through the 60s first. I'll give you a recap, and then we'll move on to the 50s next. So we finished the 60s, and nothing to speak of as far as varieties. I already tubed up the nicer coins in my nicer coin tube, so that's why they're not up here. Let's move on to the 50s next. See if we got any goodies in those years. So we've gone through the 50s, no varieties. You already saw it. We had a really nice 1958 Philadelphia. It is a slightly lower mint with less than 6.5 million minted. So I'll definitely take that in that condition. I'll tube that up. And then we had a slightly better date, but only in the higher grades. And this is not that bad, but it's really probably more of an XF, maybe a low AU. It's a 55 Denver, which definitely has less than 3.2 million minted, like I said, but not really a keeper in this condition. In order for it to fetch any additional value, it would have to be in the mint state grades, and I don't see this being a mint state. So we'll put that aside in the roll. Now that we finished the 50s, let's go ahead and move on to the 40s. So for the 40s, no varieties, no better dates. We did have a couple of 1949 Philadelphias. They're in pretty heavily circulated condition. They are a slightly better date, but only in that XF condition or better. These are not XF. These are probably around that fine to very fine grade. So definitely no additional value. Just wanted to point them out. A little bit lower mintage, more value in the higher grades, not higher grades. We only have a handful of 30s to do. Let me grab those really quick and then I'll bring you back. Well, we finished the GW quarters, nothing in the 30s. As expected, I mainly buy quarters and dimes to stack, but while I stack them, I like to see if possibly we have any good goodies. I'll tell you, it is nice getting a handful of nicer ones for my rolls for my deep stack. And these I'll just put in my stream stack, of course, and we'll use them as we need them. Now that we've finished the GW quarters, 
Time to move on to the bag I'm really excited about, the older stuff. Let's dump it out, see what we got, and then we'll do a sword. Yes, sir. Some beautiful old silver. All right. Let me go ahead and segregate it by design type and denomination type, and then we'll bring you back for a recap before we do the hunt. So I've got them sorted by denomination type, and uh, yeah, we've got a nice stack of Barber half dollars. Again, none of them are going to be in great shape, but maybe we have a better date or a better condition one in there. We have two stacks of Barber quarters, two stacks of SLQs, and while I was stacking them, I noticed a lot of them had dates, so that's pretty good. And then a small stack of Barber dimes and a couple of them were in pretty nice shape. I mean, they've been cleaned probably, but still nice to see. I think what we'll do first is I'll quickly comb through the Barber dimes, put them in date order, check them against my album, and give you guys a recap of what I found. Well, if this is how this junk silver for the older stuff is going to go as far as the hunt, I'm flabbergasted. I've got this one set aside, and we'll get to it in a second. We've got, I'm going to pull these out one by one. I'm pretty excited right now, but we've got a 1915 Philadelphia in decent shape, obviously cleaned. A 1911 Philly, pretty slick. Two 1911Ds, including a really nice one. I'll have to see if that upgrades my personal collection. A 1910P, a pretty nice toned 1909P. Again, probably an old cleaning, but there's definitely some detail on the headband where it says Liberty. We've got a 19010, which you can't get mad at either. We've also got an 1898 Philly, but the star of the show, and I've already scoped it, and I'll scope it again, is a key date dime. 1896. Oh, and again, I was double checking, thinking it was maybe something else, but that is an 1896. Right there, as you can see. And when I flip it over, it's definitely an O. 1896O is a key date dime. Only 610,000 of these minted. Originally minted, I should say. Who knows what the surviving population is. And even in a G4 condition is about an $80 to $100 coin. Now, I know that this one is probably G4, maybe slightly better. It does have a scuff on his head, which is unfortunate, but it's not that bad. And at the end of the day, I don't have this key date dime for my Barber dime collection. So I know that won't be addition. And that is a welcome addition, especially paying only 23 times face. So I paid $2 and 30 cents for this dime. Let me go ahead and check my book against my fines and I'll be back and let you know what we used. All right, I've compared the dimes to my personal collection. And as I stated, I didn't have an 1896-0, so I'll be adding that one. As far as the 1909-P, that's the one from my book. That's the one we're going to use. Definitely a nicer example. And the 1911-D, I had a pretty good example here. I do have most of Liberty showing. It's definitely a nice dime, but it pales in comparison to the one we just grabbed. Holy cow. So two upgrades and an addition for my personal book. Heck of a start to the dimes. Let's move on to the SLQs now. So we've got the SLQ sorted and it's actually a pretty good assortment. We have one dateless one, which is crazy to think about all those SLQs and only one dateless, but it does have a Denver mint mark. We just don't know what year it is. We know it's not a 19, 16 or 17. It's not a 16 because it has a Denver and it's not a 17 type one because it definitely doesn't have the type one obverse or reverse. That being said, we have a stack of 1925 Phillies, the only mint that minted SLQs in 1925. We have the 26P, no D, but a few S's. 27Ps, of course, no D or S's. 28P, no 28D, 28S. 29P, no 29D, 29S. And then we have the 1930Ps, and of course, there were no Denver minted 1930s, and then a couple of 1930Ss. I'm going to comb through these really quick to see if anything upgrades my collection. I doubt it. There are some nicer coins in here, but really nothing to write home about as far as in a higher, higher grade. I mean, some of them probably been clean, but they have good detail like this one. 
But at the end of the day, I still want to double check against my collection to see if we have any upgrades. And I'll be back with that wrap up in just a second. I went ahead and compared the SLQs to my album and I couldn't upgrade any, but I took my extra surplus SLQs, married them to this hunt, and made a near complete 1925 through 1930 set. It's only missing the 27 DNS, which are the better dates, of course, but it has all the other ones. And I tried to pick out the best examples. Of course, there's a few ugly ones that we had to fill spots, like you can see here. But overall, not a bad looking set. And this 1930S is a pretty much a stunner with great detail. Anyway... Thought it'd be cool to go ahead and make a subset. It'd be nice to get a 27 DRNS that's surplus so I can complete the 25 through 30 for my backup set. But in the meantime, we'll keep working on it. Now that we finished the SLQs, it's time to do the barbers. I'll be back after I got them sorted by date. All right, we have got the barber quarters sorted. There's a few better finds in here. We'll just work backwards. We do have a 16 P and D, a 15 P, a 14 P and D, We've got a 12P, an 11P, two 11Ss, a 10P, a 1909P, 1909D, no 1909 07P, 07D. This 1905 Philadelphia is a better date. Definitely wish it was in better condition, but 1905, there's about 5 million minted, and even in G4 condition, it's about a $30 coin. This is probably G4, although it's been cleaned, so it's just going to get details, and I wouldn't grade it anyway, but still nice to see. We got two 1903 Philadelphias. We got a 1900S, slightly better date, under 2 million minted, but not in the greatest shape, of course. And then we've got the 1900P and the 1900O, which has less than 3.5 million minted, although it's pretty beat up, and believe me, there's an O down there. You just can barely read it. Moving down to the pre-1900 stuff, we do have an 1899O, about 2.7 million, or a little bit less than that minted on that one, slightly better date, but not in great shape. Then we have a bunch of Philadelphias, an 1899, 98, 97, 95, and even a first year barber quarter, cleaned, slick, you name it, but I don't care, 1892 Philadelphia. So despite having quite a few barber quarters, Nothing really to write home about, but I do need to compare them to my album to see if I have any upgrades or additions. And if I do, I'll give you a recap of that next. After that, we'll do the final stack, which is all of the barber half dollars. And hopefully we got some goodies in there as well. Well, I combed through all the barber stuff and I only could use one item for the book. I didn't even have it. And I had two of them in this junk silver purchase and hunt. And we had two 1911 S's, and I failed to mention that even though it's not a lot of value in this condition, it definitely has a lot more value in the higher grades. Matter of fact, there's less than a million of these minted, only 988,000 plus. So when I saw I had the hole in my book, I had to do a little research because, again, it's not one that stood out to me based on condition, although it's worth a lot more in higher grades. That being said, I took the best of the two. We'll be adding a barber quarter to my collection, a lower mintage. 1911S and probably G4 condition. Let me go ahead and add that one, and then I'll come back after I've done the sort of the dates for the Barber Half Dollars. So we've got the Barber Half Dollar sorted by date and mint. The best find of the bunch is going to be this 1900 O, and it's in pretty rough shape. There's about, well, almost 2.8 million minted. In this condition, G4 condition, it is about a $30 coin, though, so I'll definitely take that. Outside of that, we had a 1901P, an 04P, an 060, 06P, 070, 07D, 080, 09P, 12P, two better date 12Ds, and a 12S. Again, none of these are in fantastic shape, but these are about 20 bucks a piece which would be about 40 times face, and I only paid 23 times face. Again, they're not in great shape, but nice to see. Let me go ahead and compare these to the book to see if we have any upgrades or additions, and I'll be back with a final recap on these and some final thoughts on this hunt. Well, unfortunately, I didn't need any of the Barber Half Dollars for my book. None of them upgraded, no additions at all. Went ahead and rolled up some of the duplicates, but I figured I'd make a lot of just New Orleans minted, Barber Half Dollars, the 1900, 06, 07, and 08. And then it was cool having a 12 PDNS set as well. So we'll probably offer those up on a future stream. 
At the end of the day, I know there wasn't anything really, really fancy in this hunt other, other than an 1896 O Barber Dime, which I even have listed on my mat as a date to find, and I finally had one, and we paid only $2.30 for it. Unbelievable. That Barber Dime is a testament as to why I always promote doing junk silver purchases when you can. You never know what somebody may have missed. You never know what you might score. You never know what you might get in these hunts. And plus, it's just fun adding constitutional silver to your stack. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this constitutional junk silver purchase and hunt. If you did, I'd appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching.